I'd like to invite to the stage another Stanford captain. This time, Larissa Fontaine, former captain of the women's gymnastics team. Larissa, make your way to the stage. This, let's hear it for Larissa. Larissa was not just a gymnast at Stanford, she was also an assistant coach, also member of the US national gymnastics team from 1989 to 1997. She's a world championship silver medalist and competed at the 1996 Olympic trials. I found out just last night, catch this, that Larissa actually has a dismount named after her, the Fontaine. And I'm told that if she's able to raise more money through Fund a Cause than Kevin did at the auction, she's gonna do the Fontaine off the front of the stage. She's a member of the Stanford Hall of Fame. She won the NCAA title in the vault in 1998, and she's a five-time NCAA All-American. So Larissa and two student athletes are gonna take us through Fund a Cause. Uh, with our auctioneer's help. So in your program, you'll see a page with a bunch of yellow levels um, for our fund a cause. And each one of those talks about what different levels of support can do to fund the piece, to, to fuel the PCA movement. There is one mistake. There's one, there's one thing that's wrong if you open to that page in your brochure. It says tonight that we have a $60,000 challenge match. That's actually a $90,000 challenge match tonight. This generous contribution comes from U.S. Trust, the Franklin and Katherine Johnson Foundation, Jody and Mark Compton, Susie and Doug Galen, Kurt Jaggers, Wendy and Tim McAdam, and Deb Meyerson and Steve Zuckerman. Let's put our hands together for them for providing this match. So please consider supporting Fund a Cause tonight as all contributions will be matched and will have twice the impact. Now let's hear it for The Fontaine. Okay. So I'm pretty tempted to ask Dennis for some intro music, but I don't know if we're queued up for any of that. Talk right into those. Is this working better? Great. Thank you so much. So thank you, Tina, for that uh, wonderful introduction. It's such an honor to be here with all of you tonight. I grew up in a gym. I did my homework in a gym. I spent uh, my college years in a gym. I got my first job in a gym. Gymnastics was a hugely important part of my life for over 20 years. And during that time, I learned all the things that we always talk about kids learning from sports. I learned commitment and confidence and time management and determination. But it wasn't the act of doing gymnastics that taught me those things. I didn't spend those hours in the gym by myself. It was the people that were part of that process. It was my mom and my teammates and my competitors and the judges and the national staff and, of course, my coaches. I had amazing coaches throughout my career. And while I was always thankful, I didn't really understand until much later on how lucky I was. Leonard Isaacs was my, co my childhood coach, and he knew that I loved school just as much as I loved gymnastics. And so he brought math and physics into his coaching. I was kind of a nerdy kid. And <laughs> he made sure that I learned about all of the countries that I was going to be competing in before we traveled there. And Kelly Hill was my coach for the 96 Olympic trials. And she didn't just support me in the gym. She gave me motivational tapes to listen to in the, the drive home. And they were tapes, so it was a long time ago. But that's what she gave me. Uh, she encouraged me to teach some preschool classes so I could stay connected with the joy of the sport. And she gave me leadership opportunities in the gym so I could learn things about leadership and teamwork and collaboration, even though I was in an individual sport. The PCA motto, better athletes, better people, just resonates so strongly with me because these are lessons for life. Uh, they're the foundation for my relationships, for my career, for my parenting, really for everything. In fact, a couple of years ago, I organized an offsite for my team at Google, and I reached out to some Stanford coaches to see if they'd talk to us. And the conversation ranged from talent management to leadership and coaching to parenting advice. And these four coaches from all different disciplines. Kristen Smith from gymnastics, uh, John Tanner from water polo, John Dunning from volleyball, and Dick Gould from tennis, also a PCA National Advisory Board member. They had this group of Google leaders reflecting for months afterwards about 
the applicability of their insights and how we could use them to address the challenges we were facing in a very different setting. And this is the beauty of sports, and this is the power of the mission of the PCA. Each practice, each competition, each post-game meal is an opportunity to help kids develop confidence and commitment and compassion. And these carry over to the rest of their lives, positively impacting all of their experiences and the other people that they interact with going forward. I joined the Leadership Council of the PSA, PCA a year ago because they're helping create more coaches like Leonard and Kelly and Kristen and Dick and people who are so important to my path. Also, as a parent now of two young kids just starting their swimming and soccer lessons, it's even important, more important to me that we increase their odds of finding great coaches like the ones I was lucky enough to have. So your support tonight is critical to helping PCA reach more athletes and more coaches, and I'm really excited to see what we're going to be able to accomplish together in this Find a Cause initiative. So I'd like to now invite Shea Barry and others um, up to the stage. Thank you. So Shea is going to help us kick off Fund a Cause this evening. She serves on the PCA National Student Athlete Advisory Board. She's a junior at Redwood High School in Marin, where she earned varsity all-league honors in soccer. She's also a travel player for Marin FC. Awesome. And she is taking time away from her prom to be here with us tonight. So let's give her a very warm welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here tonight, and I would like to tell you about how sports and PCA have impacted my life. Um, Nate Trotsky, an old friend of ours from a legendary baseball family, once said, great players are those who can play big when the game makes them feel small. All athletes experience failure in critical moments, and these are the moments that will challenge you to push through. Failure awakens weakness, disappointment, and helplessness. Failure can consume. However, what separates the good players from the great is the player's ability to carry the same drive and confidence that they had at the beginning of the game through the entire game, even if they failed during a critical moment. Great players are those who react well when they're not at their best, but at their worst. The same is true for life. The most successful people are those who are resilient and cross the chasm of failure rather than falling into it. PCA promotes this message that for sports and life, it is important to push through mistakes. In sports, I understand what it feels like to make a critical mistake. For soccer, I play defender. Being the last line against attack, defenders hold a huge responsibility, and failure comes at a huge cost, as one mistake could cost the game. Opposed to attackers who are expected to fail nine out of ten times, defenders are not expected to fail at all. Further, this pressure sets the stage for critical mistakes. This is why I connect most with the PCA message of pushing through mistakes. How do I push through mistakes? How do I act big when I feel small? I note the mistake, and then I forget about it. I play in the present. However, after the game, I'm one of those types of people motivated by mistakes to make sure they're less likely to happen again. In PCA, we have talked about mistake rituals, the small things we do to get past mistakes. During a Las Vegas showcase, my coach, Kelly Coffey, used a brilliant mistake ritual to help our team push through a big challenge. Our team was playing horribly, and we kept passing the ball to the opposite team. At halftime, Coach Kelly looked at us and said, change your blue jerseys to red right now. We stood there shocked. He said, it's obvious you can't tell the difference between your blue shirts <laughs> and the other team's black shirts, so we're going to make sure you can clearly see which team to pass the ball to. Coach Kelly's move not only physically changed our team, but created a new mindset that fixed our mistakes of the first half. I felt us transform as a team. I played in the present. And as a result, the other team did not score any more goals. There's a great book out there right now called Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. It's about a crew team that overcomes all odds. There's a quote in the book that emphasizes the message of pushing through to achieve. The quote explains, it's not a matter of how much you will hurt, or if you will hurt, but how you will deal with the pain. The story affirms that failure is not a possibility. Failure will happen. 
But champions and successful people are those who take the chances, expect failure, and use the opportunity to grow. Last month, our PCA National Student Athlete Advisory Board talked with a professional basketball player. His success showed us that he did not fear mistakes and knew how to push through them. He told us to set the bar high. If you fall short, he said, set the bar higher. He said big goals help us be more persistent. If we are more persistent, we are more likely to try again, and we will then naturally push through mistakes. PCA has really shown me how much sports sport, my sports life translates to my regular life. The concepts and people I've been able to talk to from around the country through my role on the National Student Athlete Advisory Board, including other peers, pro basketball players, champion volleyball coaches, successful business people, many of whom are on the PCA, are PCA trainers and staff, have helped me become more aware of myself on the field and as a person. I've come to respect the principles of the PCA double goal coach goals, striving to win while also pursuing the important goals of teaching life lessons through sports. And even more so, I've come to respect the coaches that embody these and who, are, and who we are honoring tonight. I've gained inspiration to set the bar high and push through mistakes. As Tony Shea, the incredible successful CEO of Zappos Online Shoes says, failure isn't a badge of shame, it's a rite of passage. In other words, pushing through the hard times is simply a rite of passage that leads to success. I urge you to support PCA tonight and into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Shea. And now I'd like to welcome Daniel Fishman Angle back to the stage. If anybody ran into him during the, the raffle uh, sourcing earlier this evening, I'm quite sure you bought a ticket. So please, uh, Daniel will now share how the PCA has had an impact on him. I first found out about Positive Coaching Alliance from Tina Sayer. I became fascinated with the organization's mission and purpose and felt motivated to learn everything I could about PCA. Two years ago, I joined the National Student Athlete Advisory Board and have made my work with this organization my community service learning project for high school. During my first few months with the organization, I read some of the books by PCA founder Jim Thompson. My favorite technique that I learned from these writings is creatively dubbed brush it off. Whenever you make a mistake, you say to yourself, brush it off, and I'm brushing the mistake off of your shoulder. Essentially, I learned to develop short rituals that help put disappointments behind me as quickly as possible. As a tennis player, this technique is vital for success. Due to the nature of tennis, mistakes occur all the time. Even in a match you win, it's possible to have made errors on more than half the points. The brush it off technique gave me a concrete tool for moving on from a mistake. As soon as the next point started, it was almost as if the previous point hadn't happened. This technique proved to have applications far beyond the tennis court. The past two years have been full of a very different type of disappointment. In mid-2013, six months after I sustained what we thought was a minor muscle pull in my lower back, my family and I found out that I had suffered bilateral stress fractures. What was so devastating about this injury was its unwillingness to heal. I spent eight months in a hard shell back brace and the result was just a slight healing of the bones. I've been told countless times by doctors that I could go back to play tennis, only to get out on the court and experience crippling back pain within a few weeks. Subsequent imaging would show that the fractures had not entirely healed. Two and a half years later, despite rest and physical therapy, I'm still not completely recovered. In the past year, it's become clear that my hopes of playing varsity tennis in college are unlikely to ever happen. Needless to say, this has been an emotionally pulverizing experience. But just like dwelling on a previous mistake in a tennis match only makes subsequent points harder, the realization that beyond rest and physical therapy, the healing of my back is and was out of my control helped me separate my own happiness and emotional well-being from the condition of my back. The application of the mindset inherent in PCA's helpful brush it off technique was in many ways my emotional savior. Despite a number of incredibly frustrating moments, I've managed to prevent this disappointment from constantly weighing on my conscience. Due to my understanding of frustration management that I've learned from the core values of PCA, I think my last two years have been much happier and more fulfilling than they might otherwise have been. And because frustrations and disappointments are present throughout our lives, 
I'm confident that these techniques, along with the many others I've learned from this fantastic organization, will continue to be an invaluable asset for my future. I owe many thanks to the Positive Coaching Alliance and to Jim Thompson, and many thanks to all of the generous donors who make transformative experiences like mine possible. Thank you.